from deep fried chicken heads to rats jumping on diners. Something seems to be going very wrong at KFC. Since losing their crown as the biggest chicken restaurant in America to rivals Chick-fil-A, that despite the fact Chick-fil-A have fewer stores than KFC, the once popular restaurant seems to be closing at an alarming rate. So what's causing this decline? Well, put simply, the quality. Okay, now to a disturbing story. She says that KFC served her this raw chicken sandwich. Yeah, doesn't look so finger licking good anymore, does it? Now, to better understand the cause of KFC's issues, we need to dig deeper into how your food is prepared. You see, unlike most fast food franchises, staff at KFC are expected to do actual cooking. Whereas at, for example, McDonald's, where chicken nuggets are pre-cooked, then delivered frozen to the store, which of course helps with quality control and minimizes what can go wrong, KFC employees are expected to prepare the chicken fresh from scratch every day. And sure, while you might think that this is a good thing, the truth is, when you're talking about an undertrained, underpaid workforce who are often in a rush, mistakes are sadly very common. And when mistakes occur, it can be much worse than just lumpy gravy or finding hairs in your mashed potatoes. Sometimes the consequences can be life-changing. Take for example the Australian girl who ended up with brain damage after her family ate at a KFC. The whole family got sick, but the girl ended up in a coma for six months. Now, tragically, she's bound to a wheelchair and she's unable to speak. For their part, KFC announced that it was deeply disappointed, but not about what happened to the girl. Deeply disappointed by the judge's ruling and the $8 million they were made to pay to the family as compensation. The girl in question suffered severe salmonella poisoning. And when you see reports like these, with customers around the globe complaining about being served raw chicken, it's a miracle that there haven't been more lawsuits against KFC. But it's not just the cooking or lack of it that's the problem. There's also issues with the chicken itself. Numerous high profile campaigns campaigns featuring celebrities such as Pamela Anderson have tried to bring attention to the farming conditions of the birds destined for KFC buckets. And while it's true that KFC isn't the only fast food chain that uses these kind of suppliers, it doesn't change the fact that these are factory farmed animals that often die of disease even before they're butchered. But this quality issue isn't just a problem in the US. KFC's choice of chicken supplier worldwide seems to be a problem for them. Take for example KFC China where their supplier was found to be selling expired meat which was then being served to customers. Or how about South Africa where employees were caught washing expired chicken on the floor. Over in the UK and Ireland, the supply chain failed so badly that KFC were forced to close nearly all of their 900 stores. Because get this, they ran out of chicken. I mean, just think about that for a second. You'd never hear of McDonald's running out of burgers or Domino's running out of pizza dough, yet somehow KFC managed to run out of chicken for the entire UK and Ireland. Crazy. It definitely seems to suggest that tighter worldwide controls are needed. The problem is, despite the negative publicity in the closing stores, KFC's way of dealing with everything is to pour tens of millions of dollars into advertising campaigns. And to do so, they rely very heavily on Colonel Sanders' image. Whether it's dancing rapping Colonel Sanders or Colonel Sanders played by comedians, he's front and center of their efforts to paper over what goes on inside their actual stores. Which makes it all the more shocking when you learn that the real Colonel Sanders, the man who founded the company, refused to eat at his own restaurant. Such was his anger at how drastically the quality of KFC had dropped that he actually went to war with the company he sold it to. To understand what happened, we need to go back to before KFC was a global giant. Back to 
when Kentucky Fried Chicken, as it was known back then, was a source of pride for Colonel Sanders. A time where the 11 secret herbs and spices really meant just 11 herbs and spices. You see, before launching a chicken restaurant, Harlan Sanders was a jack of all trades. Firefighter, lawyer, secretary, tire seller, and even a stint in the army. He bounced around from career to career, never really succeeding at anything. It was only when he opened a Shell gas station in Corbin, Kentucky, his second attempt at the business after his first gas station failed, that he stumbled into the thing that would change his life forever. Fried chicken. Now, given that Harlan's gas station was on the highway, many of his customers were hungry truck drivers stopping by to refuel. So, Harlan began cooking for them as a way of earning some extra money. And while his menu initially featured a range of items including ham and steak, it was his finger-licking good fried chicken that was the star of the show. People came from all over just to eat it, but that posed a problem. You see, in order to cook his chicken to perfection, it took time. If he didn't want to dry out the chicken, he had to cook batches in advance, but that often left him with unsold food that he'd have to throw away. But Colonel Sanders was a perfectionist. To him, quality was everything. And as the story goes, in 1939, Sanders turned to a new technology, the pressure cooker, in order to solve his problem. Problems. With the pressure cooker, he found a way to reduce his cooking time from 30 minutes down to under 10, meaning he could start cooking each order as soon as it was placed. In other words, fresh quality chicken. With this new method and chicken better than anywhere else, his business boomed for the next decade. The governor even made him an honorary colonel. But in the early 1950s, Sanders found out that a highway bypass was going to be built around his restaurant. Knowing full well that this would cut off his flow of customers, he sold his business. At the age of 66, Colonel Sanders suddenly found himself with nothing. The business he had worked so hard to build was no longer his, and he was reduced to living on nothing but his meager $105 social security checks. Despondent and on the verge of giving up, he wrote himself a suicide note. But before going through with it, he took a moment to reflect on his life and what he'd be leaving behind. He thought about his fried chicken recipe, the one that so many people had enjoyed over the years, and he wrote it down on a piece of paper. Staring at that recipe on top of the page, the colonel suddenly got an idea. Instead of ending his life right there and then, he decided to make a risky gamble. What if he could convince other restaurant owners to sell his chicken cooked his way, and then just pay him four cents for every chicken they sold? So, armed with this idea, he hit the road. This was no easy task, especially as the big restaurant chains simply weren't interested. But little by little, after convincing one small restaurant after another, Colonel Sanders began to develop a following. After all, his delicious fresh cooked chicken spoke for itself. And before long, it got to the point where the Colonel could just stay at home and restaurant owners would be coming to him begging for his recipe. But despite his success, Sanders was old and running a growing business soon became overwhelming for him. In 1964, at the age of 73, the Colonel reluctantly agreed to sell his business to a group of investors led by a couple of lawyers. In total, he received $2 million which in today's money is about 17 and a half million, but he also demanded an honorary role as a consultant to the company, and he made the investors promise that the quality of the chicken would always come first. It didn't take long for that promise to be broken. It turned out that one of the lawyers, by the name of John Y. Brown Jr., was a marketing genius. You see, he immediately took to revamping Sanders' franchise model. Instead of selling the chicken in other people's restaurants, from that point onwards, all new franchisees had to operate out of freestanding buildings selling only their chicken. What's more, careful attention was placed on brand identity. All of the restaurant interiors, all of the 
the staff uniforms or of the food packaging. For the first time ever, they all had to match from store to store. In other words, Kentucky Fried Chicken went from a franchise where the chicken was the most important thing to a company where branding was king. Soon, restaurants were popping up all over the place. But this new expansion didn't sit well with Colonel Sanders. As store numbers exploded from a few hundred to several thousand, he first became concerned and then outraged at the poor quality of the food being served. In his new role as a consultant, he went around the country inspecting various locations. When he found something he didn't like, he didn't hesitate to make his voice heard, neither to the franchisees nor to the press. In 1968, just a few years after the sale of his company, Sanders and his wife Claudia opened their own restaurant next to their home in Shelbyville, Kentucky. They called it Claudia Sanders, the Colonel's Lady Diner House. Disappointed by where KFC was headed, Sanders was angry enough to come out of retirement and his plan was to turn the Colonel's Lady Diner House into a new rival fried chicken franchise. But in order to do so, he wanted to use his face in the adverts. The problem was, KFC was already becoming a global giant and they weren't going to let some cranky old man get in their way. In 1971, Hubline, the global food and beverage conglomerate who purchased KFC from the lawyers, took Sanders and his wife to court, arguing that Sanders had given up his right to use his image when he first sold his restaurant. Instead of backing down, Sanders hit them back with a $122 million lawsuit arguing that they were preventing him from launching a new company. Eventually, they settled out of court and Sanders received $1 million. But even after that victory, although Hubline were allowed to use Colonel Sanders as their mascot, the real Colonel Sanders didn't stop talking about KFC. In one angry outburst, he argued, it's my face shown on that box of chicken and in the advertising. It's me people recognize and they stop me everywhere I go to complain. Right up until his death at the age of 90, he continued to complain. Once famously telling a New York Times reporter, that stuff is sludge. There's no way you could get me to eat some of those potatoes. Which brings us back full circle to the modern day and reports like these. Over the years, in order to make the chicken faster and at a lower cost, changes have been made to every aspect of the business, including the recipe. His face might still be synonymous with the company and at the front of every bucket, but needless to say, what KFC is serving today would have Colonel Sanders turning in his grave. From a gas station menu item to a global fried chicken empire, Harlan Sanders chicken has truly conquered the world. But is it really his chicken anymore? Hey, if you enjoyed this video, check out our investigation on this company next. What you'll discover is truly disturbing.